business. I think Satish and uh, Sami already aware of that. Um, Raghu, I am not sure if you want me to walk through all of these uh, processes uh, because I I know you'll already be aware of this, right? If you want me to skip, I can skip. But if you want me to cover as this as part of our agenda, I can do please, that. Uh, please don't skip anything. Uh, please cover because okay. uh, uh, there are certain small things where I'm facing some issues. So if you go end to end, I can stop you and kind of you know. Uh, you know ask okay questions, so that i'll really sure. need yeah sure so basically this is from a business perspective like uh, how the order to cash cycle works uh in day-to-day -day basis so this is the different steps that are involved you see on the right side uh whenever there's so this is from an export point of view okay mm -hmm. when we uh, when we refer anything in gts like uh for example either it may be a sales order or outbound delivery or uh, any billing document right these are very important documents in gts and uh, to understand the gts processes integrated with the feeder system or the erp system so we may require to know uh, how the order to cash cycle works because that is will be the base base point of where we will touch base with the customs as well and uh, we'll know you know how to proceed with the different documents and what are the different uh, details that we need to know from a gts consultant point of view so going forward, I mean, uh, order to cash cycle, the first step uh, is the inquire step. Uh, inquire step is nothing but when in a, whenever in an export process, right? So whenever you are uh, trying to sell as a, uh, you know, uh, from a business point of view. So for example, you are a customer. So you as a customer will try to inquire with different vendors who are the best possible sellers for any such particular product. So in that case, you will go for inquiry in the market. Okay, for example, if you want to purchase a phone, so you will not just go directly and, you know, uh, go to a specific shop and try to purchase it directly blindfolded, right? So we'll try to inquire what will be the best phone available and which is the, you know, best product available. I mean, if you're looking for a certain specific product, then you know that this is the product, okay, which shop I need to go and all. So, but, uh, so inquiring with the different vendors, uh, knowing their point of view from the perspective of what is the cost quantity, I mean, cost, of course, and what will be the discounts, what will be the special offers that will be providing. So all these things, uh, when we are dealing in huge business processes, right, that is very important. This is example of just a phone, but when you try to deal in business, I mean, day-to-day -day transactions of any business will be very huge. So in that case, you need to have this step uh, in the system. So inquiring is like uh, a basic uh, step where you try to take uh, certain viewpoints of different vendors. And then comes the next step, which is the quotation. So in this step, you have already finalized the uh, vendor uh, who will be your seller. And then uh, you, you go ahead with the business from them. And then you try to get a quotation for the uh, product that you are purchasing. Yeah, please go ahead. Okay. Uh, do we stop you in between or at the end of each explanation we can ask questions how do you operate normally so i operate like one slide i cover and then i usually ask questions okay then i'll go with that after you st just tell me when and i'll ask the question sure, sure. yeah okay. sure. i mean my only here it was like uh, mm -hmm. where when does the gts actually get in at the time of inquiry we do the uh, i mean uh, when does okay the, okay please continue uh -huh yeah uh, so uh, coming to your question when does gts come so gts comes uh, in picture when you want to have compliance checks on all the erp documents okay may it be quotation may it be sales order and outbound delivery so these are the main transactions that uh, we need to integrate gts with so as of now i'm not stepping into the technical uh, you know point of view yet so this is just a business uh, walkthrough of all the processes so uh, yeah going to the i mean coming back to the topic um, getting a quotation is uh, very important uh, again uh, because uh, you need to have the uh, details of the purchase that you're making right uh, from who is the vendor what is the quantity of the product that you're buying what is the delivery date right what is the product and what are the uh, you know price of the uh, what are the different pricing procedures involved in that uh, pricing of the product right either it may be packaging manufacturing costs either it may be labor costs right whatever 
so these are these are not detailed in the quotation but just a draft overview of what you can have right of important details basically and then these uh, what detailed information you can have is you can have in the sales order a sales order will contain all the information like different business partners that are involved in any particular shipment or a transaction then you have the customer info uh, the customer info is nothing but your information because the seller is going to create the sales order from his end and then he will have you as a customer uh, which which might uh, have different partner functions like you know sold to party ship to party and you know freight forwarder uh, sales representative like whatever partner functions or business might want to have in a transaction so they can have all those trans uh, business different parties involved right and then you can have product name or description now description is very important in gts terminologies right product name and description both because based on the description you want to classify your product with the tariff code the specific tariff code and tariff code is something that has high significance in gts uh, within both customs and com risk management modules okay so then comes the quantity and price right what is the quantity that you are buying and what is the price that you have been quoted for uh, so all this information will be contained in a sales order and then uh, you have the next step which is outbound delivery creation now this outbound delivery is a transaction where you are saying that okay now um, before even going to the outbound delivery step there's a there's one important step that you need to also uh, take into consideration uh, the item availability okay so when you are requesting for a particular quantity right for example you are requested for a 10 quantities of any product okay now those 10 quantities you have been quoted a delivery date as well uh, right uh, that okay today is uh, you know what uh, 16th of october now you say the seller that i need this products to, to be delivered before 26th of october so in order to meet those requirements your seller will uh, make sure that you know the quantity is available the inventory the stock which he has in the warehouse he makes sure that it is available and it is ready right he uh, at the end moment he doesn't want to you know have those complications that the stock is not available and i'm delivering the products partially but even that can be possible right in erp system you can just create a partial delivery and as well and proceed but you have to uh, keep up to the promise that you made to the customer that you know i'll be delivering the rest of the quantities few days later so that is some scenarios that you can have in the erp system and each and every scenario will be accounted uh, and taken care in gts okay so from an integration point of view so outbound delivery is just a document that has been created there's no physical delivery happening in the outside world it's just a document that can be created in a system so uh, this implies that your stock is ready and it is it can be ready for delivery uh, to the whatever whatever defined uh, delivery date has been mentioned in the sales order okay again in this case uh, coming back uh, coming back to the impact of what gts can have on the delivery date it's very huge because all the compliance checks happen on the delivery date okay um, we'll see that later when we go to gts uh, then we have the next steps called as picking packing and pgi now picking step uh, is also i mean as you know right picking usually implies that you are picking it actually from the warehouse okay and shipping to the uh, uh, there is a location called as um, you know uh, shipment ship, from where the shipment is going out actually right so uh, for example uh, your production pro place is somewhere else okay in the city and from there you are shipping it to a certain location from where it can be actually shipped okay so that is a picking step so where you are picking it from the production place and you are uh, moving it to a certain location which is a shipping area right from where the uh, goods can be loaded into a, a truck or any other uh, inline move that will be happening right that is a picking step okay uh, again in picking step we have some uh, you know other scenario for example uh you can consider that uh, the location that you are picking from does not have the uh, relevant quantities that needs to be delivered right so in that case what is the alternative option so uh, there is there's another alternative option to create a transfer posting now this transfer posting is nothing but you transfer the quantities from any other alternative location nearby okay which is which is owned by you or uh, you in the sense you are the seller right so you, are, you as a company you have another uh, multiple storage locations or transfer locations from where it can be, from where the uh, product can be shipped from so in that case 
you have that uh, you know quantities available in another uh, shipping location so what you can do is uh, when uh, there's no specific quantity available in the storage location that you're actually picking from you can just do a transfer posting from other storage location and then you can transfer it to this outbound delivery just to make sure that there's no impact on the shipment okay so this is one uh, relevant option then then comes the packing process the packing uh, is also very uh, important because you create handling units in the system which make sure that uh, it has the correct packaging uh, you know uh, made whenever because the thing is when we uh, move the goods across the across the country right when it's a cross border movement so you want to be sure that you know you declare the correct data to the customs uh, you don't want to uh, you know uh, mess up anything right so packaging is also very important in what what should be the packaging size that should be you know accommodated for a specific product depending on the quant uh, depending on the size right if it's a mobile phone it doesn't require much of the packaging but it, anyways it has to be packed it just cannot be you know sold openly like uh, it has a box piece and then it just cannot be sent like that so it has to be uh, come up with uh, some packaging uh and also some safety precautions also needs to be taken in care of some in in case of some um, you know um, other products which are relevant for uh, extra additional packaging right uh, which may be tv okay for an example television or laptop which are prone to damages right so all these uh, products can be uh, handled uh, even with more care so that is also important step uh, you create a handling units in uh, ECC. Although these these steps, what what you see here, right? This uh, picking, packaging, and PGI don't have any relevance in GTS. But uh, you know, uh, whatever relevance in GTS in the sense, I am talking about the compliance checks. Okay, here I am only referring to compliance checks. So compliance checks will only happen at quotation, sales order, and outbound delivery level. Okay, and then comes your PGI. PGI is the actual movement of goods from one location to your destination location, right? And PGI also means that there is a reduction in your inventory, okay, which is nothing but your stock is being reduced and your actual accounting entries have been made, okay? This is not a GL account entries. This is just the accounting entry, which makes that, which, which makes sure that there's a credit that's going to happen because your stock has been reduced and you are liable to receive the credit from the customer or the importer right so then the next step is the invoice invoice as you know i mean as a proof of uh, uh, proof that you have received the goods or you have sent the goods successfully you need to have an invoice with you uh, which makes sure that your payment can be processed successfully which is the last step okay your payment can be processed and this makes a gl account entry which is a general ledger accounting entry and this is taken care by the finance team so this is all in all uh, the otc cycle process uh, even payments can be screened in gts for uh, certain modules okay so payments are uh, screened for spl the spl in the sense the partners in the involved in the payment right they can be screened and payment is also important from a letter of credit point of view as well so uh will we be covering some part of letter of credit or uh, i mean i haven't seen yeah, the yeah. so that content. is in the it is in the course content. i haven't seen the course yeah. content that's why i haven't seen it so. so yeah so i have not started the gts yet so i have not displayed it yet oh okay 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 so that is in the further slides uh if you have any questions then you can let me know in this okay so to sum up uh spl checks happens at the time of uh, sales order quotation and outbound delivery right correct yes that is one thing and uh, second invoice okay uh, i'll need a lot of uh, the i mean once the classes start i think it's too premature to ask at this point sure okay so i'll move on to the uh, procure to pay cycle uh, so this is from the seller point of view how uh, the otc cycle will run right and from the importer perspective uh, you as an importer what are the different steps that needs to be done right uh, is what procure to pay cycle covers so uh, similarly if you are uh, you know uh, just taking the same example of buying a phone you request for a quotation right you as an importer or you as a end customer end customer you request for a quotation 
and then the next step is purchase requisition is being uh, you create a purchase requisition saying that okay this is this is my final vendor this is the product that i'm going to buy from him and in this many quantities i'm going to buy and this is this will be my final quoted price okay all those minute details which uh, you know not minute details i would say uh, just the draft details will be required and will be uh, available in the purchase requisition what will be the point of uh, contact i mean when i'm receiving the goods from the seller right what will be the point of contact where will be where will i be receiving the goods actually so that is all those details that you can have it in the purchase requisition then comes the purchase order so so again in the purchase order you have the vendor info who is the seller and then uh, or the supplier and material info quantity price and then similarly on your side as uh, on the seller side we have the outbound delivery we have inbound delivery as well on the importer side and then we have post post goods received so post goods received is nothing but uh, it says that it's an addition in your inventory uh, in this on the seller side it's a reduction in the inventory but it's uh, on the importer side it's an addition in the inventory right and also you have to um, you are liable to pay the uh, payment to the vendors right so in this case uh, it will be a debit for you and then invoice verification and then payment to vendors pretty much the same logic but from the import side so in this case gts will be screening purchase orders inbound deliveries uh, only okay and then um, when come when we come to the customs management our main uh, document will be the all these three purchase order inbound delivery and pgr which is material documents so all the three have to be sent to uh, customs huh? so there are different uh, methods in customs management for import process specifically so okay. in export process it's pretty straightforward that you know on the billing document you can create a declaration but from the import perspective there are two processes and we will cover that when we uh, switch okay. to customs management so uh, from an organization perspective uh, this is the sap sp org structure yeah. Uh, yeah. so you in the previous slide you have said after the purchase order inbound delivery is there like is it mandatory from the perspective of gts or it is just a, as a flow you have kept it here no actually it's not mandatory because in the usual process they don't uh, prefer to have inbound deliveries created right i mean whatever from the projects that i have worked on they directly create a purchase order and then they go for a pgr so they don't create inbound delivery yeah, but from a gts perspective a shipment, anyways shipment yeah. process or an mm -hmm. ewm process then there mm -hmm. will be an inbound delivery like because there will be a shipment notification for Correct. which an inbound yes. delivery will be created and then Correct. shipment process will happen or from the Correct. tm side or from ewm side otherwise i don't think purchase order and goods receipt is good enough so i just want Correct. to ask like, from gts perspective it is not required it's not required actually you know what happens whenever a purchase order is screened in gts right if at all it is blocked okay for any other reason for any specific reason uh, if it is blocked then it won't allow pgr to happen in your erp system so that's the base rule and the thumb rule so even if you create inbound delivery that's a second step of screening but uh, your uh, at first step itself i mean your uh, purchase order has been blocked so your pgr won't itself happen i mean it's not allowed to happen because the rfc between acc or s4 hana and gts is pretty much uh, very uh, tightly integrated and uh, uh, every callback is made from uh, uh, ecc when e either of the steps is uh, trying to you know uh, proceed so if you are trying to proceed with the inbound delivery also uh, it will make a call to gts and ask if this purchase order or the previous document has been blocked if it is blocked then it won't allow you this you to proceed with this delivery even same goes for the pgr as well if your purchase order is blocked it makes again call to gts and asks if uh, the purchase order is blocked then your pgr won't happen so it's like also you can consider that this as a, this as a double check but what happens is uh, there's one thing which uh, can be a disadvantage from uh, this point of view that if you are not creating an inbound delivery what happens is basically we have some licenses uh, which is product relevant checks in gts okay where uh, if you have any certain quantity or value based licenses right 
which are referring to actual quantities and values present in the transaction so basically the uh, depreciation that needs to be happening in the license happens at the delivery level so that is one adva disadvantage that uh, we will be seeing if we don't have an inbound delivery coming through from ecc or s for hana so that's the only point uh, that where we'll be facing issues but i think other than that um, i don't think any any issue should be there if you don't create an inbound delivery i am sure you will be pretty confused with what depreciation is but when we come to legal control part right which is the third module in compliance we'll be covering that as well and when you say that purchase order is blocked so this will be mm -hmm. happening at what time when the purchase order is being created or it is created and later vendor turns into be a, turns out to be a blacklisted vendor or he has some other risks factors associated to him because of his purchase order is getting blocked mm -hmm. But what point so, in time? Yeah. So we have. Uh, so as you said, right? Vendor is blacklisted. So we have two types of screening in GTS. One uh, for SPL specifically, it is at the master data level, which uh, screens the business partners. Uh, either it may be a vendor or customer, right? In case of an export. So in case of import, it is vendor. So you can screen your vendor initially, and then. Uh, the results are saved into the database if it is blocked or not blocked whatever the status is it is saved in the database but then when your purchase order is create uh, if you are creating the purchase order at the cre time of creation it won't show you a block but once it is saved right once your purchase order is saved at that time an RFC, rfc call is made and in, immediately a, a screen is you know immediately you can see the impact of that in gts if if there is any block then it you can see the at the time of save itself that it is blocked for such and such module so you can see that screenshot the purchase so order will only after save. save no it will it will be saved purchase order will be saved okay purchase order will be saved uh, every data will be saved but once you uh, try to create the next steps like inbound delivery of pgr you will not be able to proceed further because uh, there's the thumb rule that we have in uh, ECC set that so if there now, is any details block, then we can't proceed. I got it. Now, one question what I still have is now purchase order is saved. For example, I have mm -hmm. a release strategy placed in place for a purchase mm -hmm. order. Will the the it, will it the release workflows will be triggered or uh, it is uh, like it is also having a linkage with this block? No, the release strategy which you are talking is in ECC, right? Or S4 HANA, right? So that yeah. won't uh, trigger any workflow in GTS. So GTS, you have to specifically release that purchase order. Okay, so from the S4 perspective, once the or the ECC perspective, once the purchase order is saved, it will get mm -hmm. it will go through its release process, correct? Without having any issues, even though if it is blocked mm -hmm. by GTS. Mm, yes, correct and then so my question here is now vendor is mm -hmm. blocked for some reason mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, from from the gts per se now we mm -hmm. create purchase order in s4 or ecc and we release mm -hmm. this purchase order also to vendor that means through an eda or an email or whatsoever mm -hmm. methodology that we have so mm -hmm. in such case we are at a like we have given the green signal to vendor to procure mm -hmm. to supply to us but because mm -hmm. of some our own gts reasons or mm -hmm. maybe global reasons so we are mm -hmm. uh, or uh, maybe regulation reasons we are yeah. blocking him from the pgr so that is Correct. that may be a loss from the vendor perspective right and our relation also so should we not uh, stop it at the purchase order save or okay created but with the block you sort this out then only go without go with the purchase order so should not no not but be the mm -hmm. yeah i mean what you said uh is seems logical but the thing is gts is there for compliance checks right so as a system it has to do compliance checks at each and every level either it may be master data so for example this vendor that you are mentioning so uh, you can have different business partners in uh, or partner functions in your purchase order itself right there can be a different good supplier there can be a different invoicing party as well so all those partners needs to be screened in gts right it's not only the vendor that needs to be screened so whomsoever is part of the purchase order 
or uh, whomsoever you have as a partner in your purchase order needs to be screened and under the, undergo screening in gts so unless and until the block is um, so that's the reason we have import and export team uh, in any company they are the persons who review these uh, blocks whichever are blocked in gts and then they are the ones who give the green signal unless and until it is released in gts you won't even be able to print out the output from uh, uh, you know this uh, ecc or s4 hana so that control is there you mean that means even though Correct. if it is released you will not be able to send an email or print out or nothing uh, nothing any, any kind of integration your output your output message won't even trigger and the or it won't even show up in the purchase order output hmm so but the release can release will happen no actually unless and until it is released in gts you won't be uh, able to see no, no, the I'm about the release strategy like approval process yeah release happen. strategy in your system it would not make any impact but uh, yes unless and until you release the document in gts completely uh, you cannot proceed further so that's the thumb rule so that means vendor will not be intimated for the supply correct officially yes so whatever outputs you need to send to vendor it will not be sent from the system okay okay yeah so uh, this is the uh, sd org structure so we have different elements from a gts point of view uh, we have uh, corresponding org structure in gts as well where we have company code uh, mapping and also the plant mapping and we have a combination of uh, storage location and plant uh, which is very important from uh, some special custom procedures right, point of view so i think this everyone is aware of uh, so uh, if you want me to dig deep into this i can go deep i mean each and every entity that you see here i think it's pretty explainable right sell sales organization distribution channel and these create a sales area so so as far as gts is concerned we are only concerned mm -hmm. about company code and plant plant correct we don't have all these other mappings in gts okay all right okay and similarly this is the mm of structure similar kind of structure we have in uh, as as i told uh, earlier also we have only company code plant and storage locations in gts uh, no other purchasing organization no purchasing groups as well so so now uh, we'll step into the international trade <clears throat> so yeah i mean uh, international trade is you know exchange of capital goods services across international borders or territories because you know there is a need or want of goods or services right so in most of the countries such trade represents a significant share of gdp actually you know uh, while while this international trade has existed uh, throughout the history its uh, economic social and political importance has been on the rise in recent centuries because it's there's a lot of trade happening between each and every country and this is what is directly impacting the economic uh, and uh, political importance as well right? and carrying out trade at an international level uh, is a complex process when compared to domestic trade uh, right uh, we have two types of trade either it may be domestic either it may be international so uh when trade takes place between two or more states like currency government you know uh it it influences the market right it influences the judicial system the laws the economies and the currency as well there's a lot of exchange rates that will be considered that will have to be considered right when there's an international trade and to ease and justify the process of trade between countries of different economic standing in the modern era some international economic organizations were formed you know such as the w trade trade uh, world trade organization which is wto so these organizations right work towards the facilitation and uh, growth of international trade <clears throat> so statistical services of uh, lots of intergovernmental and you know other organization uh, which which will have statistical agencies who will officially publish the statistics on international trade right for example in eu we have uh, uh, the european community formed where 
they have their own uh, process uh, either it may be import or export they have their own rep reporting of statistical data it's not uh, called as a import and export it's called as dispatches and receipts right in eu for example so that was just an example so they have their own uh, representatives whichever eu country is trading with each other right so they will have uh, a different type of report reporting happening in their european union so whenever a product that is you know transferred or sold from one party uh, in from a party in one country to a party in another country is an exporting from an originating country right and also from an import from a receiving country so all these imports and exports are accounted for in a country's current account and the balance of payments and this is what makes the uh, you know increase in gdp or increase in whatever economic factors that you can consider trading globally you know uh, may give uh, consumers and countries the opportunities uh, they can be exposed to new products and markets right uh, almost every kind of product can be found in international market for example food clothes spare parts you know uh, oil jewelry right services are also traded uh, such as tourism banking consulting transportation right uh, so this international trade in principle is not different from domestic trade as you know the motivation and the behavior of parties involved in the trade do not change fundamentally right regardless of whether it's a trade across a border or not so however in practical terms carrying out trade at international level is typically a more complex process than uh, domestic trade the main difference is that international trade is typically more costly and than the domestic trade this is due to the of course the cross border such as explicit tariffs and as well as uh, implicit uh, non tariff barriers uh, such as time costs right due to border delays uh, language and cultural differences so lots of lots and lots of challenges come into the picture so another difference you know between the domestic and international trade is that factors of production such as capital and labor are also more mobile uh, within a country than across countries so uh, thus this international trade is mostly restricted to trade in goods and services and only to a lesser extent you know to trade in capital labor or any other factors of production so you know as of today the largest uh, trading states are uh, usa china germany right these are the three top states or countries you can say india start uh, stands at 13th position as of today <clears throat> in terms of international trade in terms of imports in terms of exports right in terms of revenue generated in billions right uh, from the international trade so <clears throat> so with an increase you know in day to day changes in rules and regulations from the international trade uh, international changing standards there are lots of complex compliance checks that every entity needs to adhere to right there is an increased list of banned entities or parties in each country against which the exporters or uh, you know the importers needs to be aware of so on day to day basis lots and lots of people are being added to the denied party list right which is nothing but our spl list sanction party list okay so that's the reason why custom clearance also is a, a huge headache right uh, custom clearance are uh, of goods transported by sea often becomes a challenge when it's a sea mode of transport right incorrect classification or packaging of data or packaging of goods puts the consignment at risk of not reaching the recipient and the complexity of documentation also needs to be completed it requires uh, lots of accuracy and within a fair amount of time it, if you are just delaying right uh, then uh, you're not accountable for a trade so that's what custom expects each and every customs uh, uh, do that expectation so what are the most important and common problems in custom clearances um, you know custom clearance of goods transported you know uh, by sea is often a challenge as as i told so there can be inaccurate duties so taxes on imported and exported goods shipped by sea as a, among the most misleading issues as of today right these taxes uh, depend on the country as well as weight category and value of goods right what all what all the important factors that you want to consider you can consider because you have to pay attention to the paperwork to avoid tax issues 
and uh, you know all the commercial documents contracts and invoices also need to be uh, with you uh, when you are trying to you know have uh, clear the custom duties because unless and until you clear the custom duties or you pay the taxes that are liable to your goods and services that you are procuring it into the country uh, your clearance would happen for your goods and your goods are not distributed in the market unless and until you do that so this is uh, another you know challenge and also incorrect cargo classification you should pay attention to the classification of the cargo many uh, problems arise from an inaccurate description the uh, description of the goods that we are referring to right some some organizations what they do they have the description of goods like uh, what is the description of goods and then they have the packaging data also appended to the description of goods they they have the hs code they have you know hs description also appended so they have different rules uh, that they follow i mean it's uh, based on organization to organization but it it's uh, also part of the uh, screw, uh, screening right <clears throat> so because uh, what what you are what you end up do what you end up uh, you know as a loss is lots of uh, lots of penalties you end up paying because of in, inaccurate uh, uh, you know declaration of goods so goods are classified according to, to size dimensions state of aggregation specific features degree of hazard if it's an hazardous good right all those needs to be considered and also how the cargo has been handled all right the more accurate information you provide the shorter time your custom procedures will take right either it may be export or import then consignee related problems um, not only the consigner who is the exporter is responsible for custom clearance of the consignment as there are cases where the consigner pays all the necessary duties now consigner here is someone whom i am talking as a exporter point of view so and completes and he pays the duties in some ways right and he duly completes all the forms but the uh, you know but the consignee uh, may not be able to follow all the uh, rules and regulations so in that case uh, you know the receipt of cargo is not a shipper's responsibility right to avoid any disagreement inform it's it's better to inform the customer of any potential charges that may apply to the consignment and you can send them the documents that will be required to collect the consignment right <clears throat> so also shipping of dangerous goods is also a challenge in the international trade and then uh, optimizing the third challenge is optimizing the cost involved in the trade so the amount of cost involved in any shipment is a very important factor right because every company either exporting or importing they try to minimize the costs that are involved in during any transport now uh, just to give you an example or insight uh recently an incident related to suez canal had severely impacted the globe's economy right and you everyone might be aware of that so numerous vessels you know that were sailing on the suez canal route were suddenly halted so with every passing minute uh, the losses mounted and the scheduled delivery of shipments were getting delayed so the reported losses you know the number of reported losses per minute were accounted to be dollar uh you know 6.7 million or 6.7 million dollars that's per minute and then they the carriers who were stuck in the uh, you know process in the suez canal which was due to the halted step ship they had to make a difficult choice they had to either wait and watch unless the route gets clear or either they had to reroute uh, via the southernmost step of africa if you see the globe's map right so suez canal is a a uh, small channel uh, you know between africa and uh, uh, you know the europe the middle east right so if you if you are not able to pass by that channel then you have to take the longer route uh, passing from the southernmost tip of africa and then coming to the uh, indian ocean right if you want to uh, sail your goods from uh, africa to uh, china say for example so you have to cover that entire longest route <clears throat> so rerouting this via africa would not just add a couple of weeks right to the already delayed journey which you had it would also require more fuel along with the cost of extra surveillance that you want to do so you know what most companies outsays the creation of import and export declaration to the carrier that's the reason so these costs are very uh, usually high and usually hidden in the transportation forfeit right so uh 
that's the that's one of the reason uh, you know that's one of the challenges in international trade and the other important challenge that we see here is making the trade compliant and also making use of electronic transfer nowadays uh, you know when we need to communicate with the customs for every shipment uh, relevant for export and import it's important that you make sure that you have a uh, you have the data sent to the customs already <clears throat> right so if you consider the volume of shipments for every company that has lots of business operations uh, on day to day across the globe so each and every shipment that is across the border will have to be declared to the customs right and a notification should be sent to them because you're crossing the border so most of the companies who are not very confident if the data they are submitted to the customs or not is correct or not so they go with the broker so they usually have a broker who can fill all the data and submit it to the customs on behalf of them okay so he is a moderator who can uh, help in between the exporter and the customs authorities right and he will correct if any information is wrong okay now people who are very confident of the data that they are submitting to the customs will be correct uh, okay uh, they can directly uh, submit it to the customs via any mode of trans, uh, transfer either it may be electronic or either it may be if uh, paper filing so uh, just imagine if you uh, you know uh, try to have a paper communication if you just going manually and submitting it to the customs or you are just sending the pdf format so you can just imagine the amount of manual work or manual activity involved in this activities right so your naked eye can uh, miss out on some of the information which is wrong okay which has been printed on the paper hence it is very important that you uh, electronically transmit everything to customs because this not only helps to identify the, the data that are prone to error based on certain validation so you know also most of the uh, customs authorities expect electronic transfer of declaration data since it is just transmitted in just a go you know just one click so this is uh, these are the very important challenges in international trade <clears throat> so going to the next uh, slide so uh, if you see these are all the factors you know uh, these are all the different uh, attributes or properties of international trade you can see now uh, if you just uh, focus on globalization right increasing in population world economies has been made directly interdependent interdependent on the cross border trade okay now since the requirements keep uh growing on uh, in growing and increasing on day to day basis there's a, a sudden uh, you know a drastic change or drastic increase in uh, imports and exports as well <clears throat> and uh, in this uh, in this process you have to adhere to all the rules and regulations of what international trade defines right whatever your company uh, whatever your country which you are sending to and which you are exporting from uh, you're dealing with right outsourcing uh, you know uh, is also a very important uh, aspect because you are outsourcing it from different contractual parties or different external vendors so the the, the goods that you are producing it in your country you are outsourcing some raw materials from other countries so in that in that process what are all the different um, benefits that you can gain and uh, what are all the different procedures that you need to follow to gain the benefits right that all uh, that is one of the aspect tariff classification for any product is at most priority uh, no classification means no product is uh, allowed to ship to be shipped right imports uh, exports also as you know i mean it's very important uh, that is what defines the trade uh, which is called as international trade uh, domestic is not classified as international trade right so cost uh, there are different cost parameters involved in any trade and it is e easily automated uh customs either it may be a declaration to customs or any uh, query related to customs clearance you can have it sorted uh, with international trade right now since you are we are uh, stepping into the gts it's very easy to sort out these uh, issues right freight movement uh, may maybe it inland move or international move right everything should be monitored also in any shipment what is the different routes it is passing through it's something in, uh, you know that requires equal importance as well different trade documents uh, there are uh, you know lots and lots of documents involved in any international trade in any international shipment 
you can uh, count the n number of documents that will be printing and handing to handing it over to the customs for uh, uh, approvals right uh, or you can either uh, count the number of documents that you will be sending to the uh, to, to your customer who is located in a different location right uh, you can just think of all the documents that you will be uh, you know uh, having to be sent either it may be commercial invoice packing list export packing list uh, certificate of origin you know example example like right then insurance uh, so uh, if you are an exporter uh, you know uh, since it's a long journey from one country to another country so you have to make sure that insurance is covered for the product uh, which you are shipping right which is being uh, exported because uh, in the means of uh, transport anything can happen right there's a risk of uh, any losses that may be incurred to your customer as well who has already made the payment okay so for that you need to make sure that your insurance is covered as well right now now all these are uh, being uh, accounted for the inco term that you use right if uh, your inco term suggests that you use you have the you have covered insurance in the inco term as part of the an agreement between you and the buyer then you have to be liable for uh, uh, or you have to be accountable for the insurance as well right exchange rate um, exchange rate uh, the rate at which the currency will be exchanged you know for another currency and affects the trade and the movement of money between countries right uh, which accounts to uh, gdp yeah? exchange rates are impacted by both the domestic currency value and also the foreign currency value right country of origin is also a crucial factor in determining the preferential status for a product from where the product is originated from okay uh the different types of laws and then different types of pricing procedures that are involved uh in uh, uh quoting a price for any product that is liable for an international trade shipment okay so till this point uh any doubts in these two slides this was just a brief of uh, the international trade so it's clear you have anything okay uh exchange rate which you mentioned as yeah as the gts as gts people like how are we affected on that because uh, we so you know uh, we there is a purchase order with certain dollar amount involved or there's a sales order with mm -hmm. dollar amount involved but yeah. just say we you know we uh, we sell something for 100 dollars and you mm -hmm. know and suddenly dollar it falls down but ultimately it's we are liable for that it is not like yeah. uh, gts is not directly affected right for ex with exchange rate no it's not directly affected but you have to have the data uh, available in the system right so you have to uh -huh. have you have to be in sync with all the data that is available in the erp as well okay so in case your uh, customs are requiring the uh, you know currency value in a different uh, uh, currency right mm -hmm. there is a, a, a certain uh, currency customs currency that you might be aware of it may be a statistical currency or the uh, condition uh, which involve the customs cost as well so if they are expecting a value in a different currency then you have to have the exchange rate available for that in the gts system else uh, you may end up uh, declaring a wrong uh, value right okay good that's where i need your help <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so the trend of international trade uh, it's increase in global and regional level regulations it's very hard to coordinate right uh, recently you know uh, the sanctions on russia uh, just got increased from uh, from the us perspective from the eu european union perspective right so uh, it's very hard to coordinate uh, when you do all the activities manually so gts as a system it offers all the relevant master data that you need to set up from a sanctions perspective or day to day updations that happen in international rules and regulations so that can be easily automated right so new e filing requirements system cannot keep up so whatever your existing or legacy system is currently that you're operating from so it cannot keep up the e filing requirements that have been mandated by each and every government okay nowadays um, no government uh, accepts or expects uh, paper filing they every, every everyone is expecting the e filing okay which is electronic filing electronic transfer of your declarations and data 
then complex trade process is manual costly and error prone i mean yes uh, if you're uh, doing everything manually uh, just just check uh, just uh, a manual activity if you are doing right it is prone to errors right lot of errors and you may end up paying a lot of fines just for a negligence of uh, small data right that you have been uh, that if you just try to avoid it that okay uh, uh, yeah, we will take care that's where your broker comes into the picture that's where you know you will not be confident that uh, okay i'm not confident enough to send the data then i'll send it to the broker he can manage it from his end so that is one more thing and a typical cross border shipment involves uh, you know 25 parties uh, you know lots and lots of people may be involved in the uh, movement then you have uh, 35 plus documents as I, as i told you right i mean the law there will be lots and lots of documents involved in uh, any shipment then we, <laughs> these this is just a number 600 laws uh, this is not the actual number so it may be uh, uh, it, you may have to you know uh, be up to the laws or uh, you may have to be compliant to the rules and regulations that your government has proposed for any any shipment either it may be a dangerous goods shipment either it may be a normal product that are exporting either it may be a food product right and uh, lots and lots of agreements are coming into the picture now uh, i mean uh, lots and lots of countries are, um, are doing friendly trading between themselves uh, where trade agreements come into the picture so again challenges uh, you know uh, denied parties have to be strictly adhered to there is a, a list published by the government agencies uh, every day actually uh, these lists are been updated on day to day basis uh, if you i mean you will not believe it but it's updated on day to day basis and uh, there has been additions and uh, deletions in those lists so basically it's an updated list which you receive and uh, for this reason you need to have the data provider uh, uh, for every organization there is a data provider who will be providing with the list of denied parties it, security risk uh, export and import processes will have to be uh, tightly scrutinized uh, they have to be screened you know uh, very tightly and very closely monitored as well <clears throat> else you may have to uh, you may have a security risk you may have a brand risk you may have a corporate brand uh, picture that will be you know if you don't adhere to any such rules and regulations right so you may end up paying fines and also you will end up ruining your corporate brand as well which you have maintained it from so many years okay. national law uh, licenses to exporters and importers again licensing for specific products that are uh, liable for licenses are also very important that needs to be accounted department laws products correctly classified to arrive uh, and current correct custom duties if your product is not correctly classified uh, then uh, it, it will end up paying the wrong duties right you may end up paying huge duties i'll tell you an example where you know uh, where we where recently a uh, issue happened uh, between uh, a huge automobile uh, sector industry where they had uh, incorrect classification of custom duties when i'll step into the uh, relevant module right i'll be able to tell you that example so embargoes restrict the movements across country as per law uh, right uh, if there is any country restriction that uh, you need to be aware of you can easily uh, be adhered to that uh, restriction then important and important and exporting uh, meet the extra contractual requirement so if any business partners uh, if you have uh, any agreements between them right or from what point uh, for example if a shipment is going out of uh, us to india okay so in that case from us to india it's a very long route right so in that case uh, what will be the uh, you know uh, responsibility of an exporter okay till which point of time i am responsible for the responsibility of these goods and i have to keep the i have to safeguard these goods basically at till what point of time either it is till the port of destination either it is till the port of departure right so all these uh, requirements are being taken care you know so yeah these are the different challenges uh, in gts or, or or probably in international trade uh, which will be resolved by gts yeah which is uh, mainly focused on uh, you know 
all these uh, modules which uh, gts has like compliance management customs and risk right all these modules solve on uh, mitigating the risk whatever the challenges you face in international trade so this is the modernization of uh, government it systems right if you see uh, uh, you know or nowadays nobody accepts paper filing so aes uh, which is automated export system right the full form a says nothing but a uh, aes system for us okay so this has been mandated in june 1 2008 if you just uh, if you can imagine now we are almost uh what 14 years uh from the mandate right uh then we have german customs which is atlas okay so which has mandated aes in 2009 and then we have nota fiscal for brazil then we have japan customs uh also mandated the same so ncts as well so you have a, a specific system for uh, uk as well which is called as chief even that has mandated in 2005 okay so all these systems are expecting electronic transfer rather than paper filing which is also pro prone to a lot of errors right so till this point uh, any questions any queries concerns uh, now we are stepping into gts it's clear thanks okay so let's uh, step into the sap global trade services so we have this uh, agenda where we'll have introduction session objectives process walkthrough uh, and then uh, so starting off what is gts gts uh, nothing but global trade services system uh, it lets you automate various services provided by sap for your foreign trade purposes the main services include customs compliance and risk we have another module which is electronic compliance reporting nothing but as interstat which we'll be covering as well. So why GTS? Uh, GTS offers use the below services, securing and streamlining cross-border transactions, right? Uh, which is very important. Uh, whatever parties have been involved in any typical cross-border, uh, right? Uh, all those parties need to be screened and uh, secure, uh, securing in the sense, you're making sure that you're not dealing with a denied party or a denied country or you're not violating any compliance laws ensure full regulatory trade compliance you know expedite custom clearance uh, which is easily done by gts system uh, why this because uh, whenever you are informing the customs uh, right uh, so for example uh, you know uh, 20th of october you have to send a shipment across uh, from usa to india right so in this case you have to inform the customs 72 hours prior before the shipment is uh, departed okay so now if you just have to travel manually and uh, send the details to the uh, customs it would be uh, a lot lots and lots of uh, time would be uh, wasted over there even if you send an email communication or even if you send uh, it via email what happens is um, they are prone to errors right as i said so customs will not manually try and uh, correct your errors so what happens is when you have gts in place so gts will send an electronic transfer directly to customs authorities and what the customs will do if there is any errors in your declaration right so they will send back a notification with a update saying that okay uh, in this shipment this is the field that has uh, errors so that's the reason why i'm sending you back and i'm not giving you a registration number so once you correct this and send it back to me i will uh, check again and come back to you so that is the communication that happens between gts and customs directly so although we have a middle uh, you know middleware involved uh, it is called a c burger we will be uh, although unfortunately we will not be able to see it because procuring the c burger and correcting to customs requires a lot of uh, cost and uh, you know we will be able to simulate the simulate the setup okay we can simulate the setup how we receive the incoming message and how we can send the outgoing message so that will simulate in this training okay mitigate financial risks of global transactions and take full advantage of international trade agreements the ftas the free trade agreements that you see uh, are uh, on day to day basis they are uh, increasing i mean 
each and every con- uh, country wants to have a friendly uh, you know uh, the friendly uh, export and import business between them right so they don't uh, so that's the reason they have a implementation or a, of uh, this uh, free trade agreements which can help help the importer actually pay less duties and reduce duties when he is importing anything accelerate cross border trade transactions reduce the risk of non compliance and also increase efficiency through integration and automation so everything is integrated i mean if you want to have uh, sap tm integrated to gts you can do that you can if you want to have any other uh, non sap system integrated to gts you can have that so gts is very flexible system where it can be integrated it can be integrated with sap ewm as well for stock purposes for inventory or trans- inventory related uh, uh, you know data as well yes and everything can be automated uh, i have a question here uh, yeah. since, since you spoke about integration um, gts we normally integrate with the tm you said tm and ewm or uh, what is it no no actually we usually integrate most of the companies are now switching to tm right but before yeah. that we had this ecc and s4 hana systems uh, which uh-huh. are existing now so uh-huh. usually gts is very reliable and integrated with uh, ecc and s4 hana okay mm-hmm. uh, but since now tm is also uh, integrated or uh, you know uh, coupled as part of s4 hana package so now uh-huh. again it is very easy to uh, have the checks as well from s4 hana to uh, gts yeah so as, as far as integration yeah. request yeah okay so as far as integration with uh, integration of gts with tm and ewm like uh, you can help us there right uh ewm uh, i'm not pretty confident uh, but tm i can help you yeah, definitely good. that's good enough for me thanks yeah so uh, yes so we have uh, three modules uh, three main modules in compliance compliance management as well uh, sub modules which we can consider so uh compliance management contains all the functions related to import export control regulations it allows you to monitor you know procedures that are subject to licensing requirements and to comply with legal regulations that restrict or even prohibit trade with individual states political groups and individuals now individual states uh, what we refer to here is countries now for country level check we have embargo for political groups or uh, individuals we have uh, sanction party list screening and for uh, product related checks which require licensing specific licensing and legal or regulatory checks we have import export license or nothing called as legal controls then we have the customs management module which allows you to standardize and automate import and export procedures with customs authorities <clears throat> so it can be used for communication uh, to the customs authorities via the exchange of electronic messages as well as printing all the necessary forms for any uh, shipment that is needed right so this simplifies and accelerates uh, clearance and administration and now product classification is also an important striving factor in gts okay assignment of correct hts codes or mass classifying up uh, multiple products with a single hs code Uh, you can do that uh, based on the standard reports provided by cp so we have import export management product classification and printing of trade documents mainly as part of customs management package so this management uh, yeah uh, sorry one question what i had i was i just to ask you sure. what, uh, like tm to gts what level of re- uh, why that is uh, required or more what is the significance of tm to gts like in terms of business process that you have come across like what is that just to uh, yeah just to uh, have a brief uh, answer yeah just to have a short and simple answer basically the logistics data that you have in tm right so that is very important for from gts point of view also for example from a product perspective right if you have a, a certain packaging uh, info in a tm for example um, now you are uh, having a container if it's a c c mode of transport you are having a container and a seal right so all those information coming from ecc 
is also possible right but there is no specific fields in ecc where you can have it but tm has that uh, capability to integrate it with gts and send all this information as part of standard and also the point of departure and point of destination from a gts point of view it's very important because that's where your customs offices and customs uh, um, you know uh, if it's a sea mode of transport right uh, your customs offices will be at the sea uh, or office of departure basically which you call in gts are basically situated at the uh, sea uh, port okay and if it's an air mode of transport again there's a customs office uh, situated at the airport as well so similarly to meet all these regulatory requirements and all those uh, uh, details which your customs require right uh, it should be very accurate and very clear and for these uh, details to be present in ecc and to be integrated might or might not require some uh, enhancement or customization but from tm it is pretty straightforward and pretty standard that the interface is very supported but there's a disadvantage in this um, what uh, is the disadvantage is when you integrate uh, tm and gts for compliance okay you won't be having product relevant checks you will have only spl and embargo uh, checks but from a tm to gts integration perspective you will not have legal control checks so that's one disadvantage so uh, in my previous project we had this requirement when where we had tm as a uh, erp system or a feeder system to gts we didn't had uh, ecc or s4 hana so in that right um, our uh, challenge was to have a product relevant checks for uh, the products that are coming in uh, from tm so we had to build a customized module uh, and we have to build a customized interface where we use where we had this product relevant checks in gts but that's still possible but as part of standard package from uh, uh, tm to gts you won't have that so that's one disadvantage but coming to the advantages there can be many product is being shipped yes so that information cannot flow from tm to gts that's gts yes yes that's right but the tm has the product information no yes like but the standard system. interface yeah standard interface won't have the product information properties are required that is what you don't have that's what you mean to say correct uh, because you know the thing is uh, although uh, see uh, there are two perspectives that you can look from a tm gts integration if you have a s4 hana system in place okay fine you can transfer all your master data from s4 hana and then whatever your transportation order and transportation requests are you can seamlessly integrate it with gts okay but even then you cannot have your product relevant checks when you are receiving uh, base base orders from tm so mainly you know uh, why tm is integrated with gts is for customs purpose and not for compliance correct yes but when it comes to one question why what i have is now for example i a tm also has a carrier and uh, associated agents right like who right. are there mm -hmm. for us to do our services in terms right. of mm, now will that also be checked their profiles also will be scanned actually correct so they will be scanned okay though all the partners which are relevant in any transaction they will be sent across to gts and they they are relevant for screening but the thing is product relevant checks won't happen that's the only thing mm. okay yeah the uh, le le module which uh, exists in sap right acc or uh, uh, ecc actually um, so basically uh, that is not uh, so much evolved as sap tm has so that's the reason you know from le everyone is uh, switching to this sap tm and uh, for gts this is very important that it has all the necessary information so that's the reason sap has provided standard integration which will directly integrate with the customs module module but the thing is when you try to integrate it with the compliance module uh, why sap has not provided is because they are basically thinking that anyways we'll have the erp system as ecc or s4 hana anyways the standard integration between uh, s4 hana and gts will happen so we'll have this module integrated only for customs purpose so that's the basic idea behind uh, this integration actually and not uh, if you thinking if you're thinking from a sole sole perspective that okay only tm will be integrated with gts that the challenge that you will be facing is 
the master data how will you be sending the master data uh, from uh, uh, tm to gts because there is no such option to transfer there is no such plugin that you will have that uh, to be transferred because uh, in ecc or s4 ana we have the gts plugin which is separately installed and which can help us transfer all the relevant master data for either compliance customs or risk management so that's the main challenge only transactions can be integrated from uh, uh, tm to gts and that too it's relevant only for customs management module and uh, compliance it's only spl and embargo checks tm doesn't have these metal masters at all like product masters those data they will not I think have they have it, but there's no option to transfer it from uh, they don't have they don't they will not have yeah. correct tm will not have any I, according to me what i small knowledge what i have okay they don't okay. have i have worked in tm before <laughs> so uh, i have seen that options we have explored all possibilities but there's no option to transfer all the master data from tm to gts yes 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 okay yes so as part of risk management uh, it mainly deals with uh, mitigating the financial risks while trading globally and you know providing cost effectiveness it also includes the preference determination now main uh, main uh, module of risk management is the preference management of functionality which leverages trade preference to benefit reduced duties and zero duties to the end customer and then we have letter of credit processing as well where different banks are involved in the transactions where you are uh, you know having uh, to take help from different banks either at the exporter side or importer side yeah this is same now, as what ecc has today or it is something different this lc bg process let of credit no i think uh, there there uh, it's everything manual i guess because uh, they have only credit checks if the customer is uh, liable for a credit check right if he is liable to pay the payment or process the payment unless and until the credit block is cleared right so then you will not be able to process the payment uh, or you will not be able to process any uh, further uh, documents uh, you will not be able to no, do no, the tci is, or this anything this is called as uh, if i because i have worked on this in multiple mm -hmm. projects so this is called documentary mm -hmm. uh, proofs like uh, documentary payments documentary is, credit yeah yeah documentary payments say for example if i am a customer and i want to uh, get a material or an, i want to import from um, say xyz company so now mm -hmm. the company doesn't know me right like so in such cases Correct. the they will demand for a like bank in between to intervene and they okay. create a letter mm -hmm. of credit or a bank guarantee so upon the failure oh. of any payment mm -hmm. Uh, we within yeah. the payment term agreed. Then, mm -hmm. as a cust company, X Y Z company can take that through submitting that LC, and they can release the payment from the bank. It is like so that's, I that's am paying yeah. a bond through the mm -hmm. bank. It is something like that, right? Correct. So, yes. So it's that is process. what it is. Now, this how it works is like when I will create an OFD document called it is called a financial document. Okay. Mm -hmm. In the, mm -hmm. uh, under the risks and uh, this, uh, like uh, uh, under the credit management and risk portfolio, right? So mm -hmm. under that note, they create a lot of other document types, and that will have its own procedure, and that procedure okay. is assigned to the document types. So, I, I'll, okay. so that's how the configuration works. Now, whenever these the procedures are assigned, it will check against the mm -hmm. customer and the uh, and this uh, uh, kind of uh, documentary proof that I am asking for. So, like right. uh, whether it is a LC procedure or a bank guarantee procedure, something like that. So, there will be an FD document which will be created, financial document, and that will be assigned to the document. Document means what? Uh, the sales order. Sales order. Okay. Yeah. So, once so, similar process you have in GTSN. Yeah. Yeah. Once it has the document in the sales order, means what? That also has goes through the approval. This financial document is letter of credit or a bank guarantee that is mm -hmm. created, whether it is received, whether that will also have a lot of other fields like for what are the bank account number, what is the LC number, right. what is the external right. check number, identification, a lot of other things. 
so those things and what the those account numbers are validated and it will be approved by the financial controller who is uh, the credit controller or credit controller or financial controller so he will approve that yes i have received this lc or i have received this bg okay and these bank and account numbers are correct so all this so one, the approved ones will go and sit in the sales order so this means what the credit check happens against these 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 documents not on the original credit uh, limit that i have for these orders this will be a special case right this will be an i am dealing through an lc don't consider the existing credit what i have it is a yeah. special credit that i have taken i am promising you the payment through lc or bank guarantee it is like yes so yeah. this is how it is integrated with the credit yes of course what you are saying is right it doesn't have an integration with purchase process it is like it is all incoming uh, document not the outgoing ones what we pay mm-hmm. is not is not part of the integration what we uh, get from the customers it passed a part of the integration through credit but the documentary pro, uh, payments are pro, uh, like covered through this risk management so what my question was like whether it is same or it is something different to what is there in ecc today pretty much from your explanation it's the same so just uh, to add some things here so basically what happens is uh, in letter of credit right processing so as you said uh, there will be certain documentation that will be printed and it will be attached to the sales order so similar kind of activity you can print all the documents and you can send directly to the bank from uh, mm-hmm. gts so in this case bank and your gts system can be integrated so that functionality is also available okay uh but again that is something which uh, requires uh, technical work to be done so it's not a standard work so uh, that's that's uh, one more functionality because you can process so similarly how you process electronic uh, documents from customs management for custom declaration to customs authorities right so in that similar process you can process the lcs with the proper documentation to the bank for further processing and to make sure that you receive the payment on time Hmm. Now, uh, uh, see, I don't know whether you are aware of it. Like there was one business function that uh, um, um, that SAP had come up with as an attachment to this LC and bank guarantee process through uh, this web-based application. Like it was working mm-hmm. on NetWeaver business client, NWBC functionality. Okay. Okay. So well, it had come up with. like i had also i was also part of that sap meena testing those days like okay. uh, uh, they had come up with like uh, these proper workflows and creating an lc and bank guarantee for both purchase and sale but that is not associated with credit check it is only for lc okay. and bank guarantee management monitoring and sending it to bank and all those so whether oh, the okay. same thing is utilized in s4 or it is something totally different that s4 has come up with Mm. so basically it, it's similar to licensing that's what i can say if there is lc yeah. it will uh, uh, it will process if there is no lc then it all won't allow your order to be processed further so even now it has a linkage with the credit also or it is independent no actually it doesn't uh, check for credit it the only check that will made base uh, is basis on the payment term on what payment term uh, your payment has been processed or what is the important so this is the base uh, check for which uh, gts considers or accounts your okay. payment term is very important here yeah right okay okay so raghu you were saying something right uh as far as the configuration goes for letter of mm-hmm. credit processing will we go as far as you know um Uh, you know integrating with the bank or how far are we going to go in this uh, course no we'll just to uh, we'll just see how it can uh, you know block any transaction if there is no proper lc in the ah. system okay because okay. Uh, integrating with the bank you know right the amount of 
efforts that will be needed i think uh, this no, that be thing it's, that yeah thing. it's more of it's it's more of a finance uh, department project, yeah. only but uh, right. my question as far as gts side goes like um, how far mm -hmm. can we go as a consultant or how far do they expect us to go as a consultant that is my question so basically it's on the requirement uh, i mean in any any project there are certain business requirements right if they are ready to invest in the uh, integration then uh, of course you can consider that path but okay. uh, as right. a consultant you should always uh, be uh, sticking to the standard uh, uh, you know functionalities that sap has offered so okay we, usually nobody tries to uh, you know um, <laughs> suggest the uh, customization or enhancement part so if they need any and if they are uh, uh, if they're having that uh, thing that okay we need to have this or else our business won't uh, strive so then uh, that's the re that's the uh, time when you need to think of another uh, uh, solution perspective where you can have the integration <clears throat> with your bank okay yeah okay so this is the agenda uh, for uh, uh, you know for the training and the overview of this all these modules so it will take some time but uh, we will cover all these modules and, and then we will start with the technical uh, settings <clears throat> so we'll first cover the gts solution summary so uh, gts solution summary uh, as uh, we saw i mean previously as well export management import management uh, lc uh, tpm trade preference management and interstat reporting on a whole these are the important modules it, there's one more module called as restitution uh, it is for export refunds which is not more um, uh, extensively used so that we don't have in our radar as of now i have seen i have not even seen one project in my uh, 3 years at least for restitution so yeah that's more agriculture oh. related right something like that correct mm -hmm. agriculture cap refunds basically mm -hmm. overview and gts uh, these are the modules that will be looking for compliance customs risk and ecr okay Good. So from a solution uh, sorry no uh, the trading of printing of trade documents and um, that caught my attention that's all <laughs> okay okay sir <clears throat> so as a uh, whole picture of sap gta solution summary uh, so this is how the gts integration happens uh, you know when we come to the screening of uh, embargo and sanction party list screening so we have this vendor master and customer master which will be our main base um, master data that will we will be screening for or screening against and then we uh, we can also screen our uh, banks we can also screen uh, employees who are on contractual basis uh, okay we can in integrate all these master data as well but usually when we come to the export import process these are the main different business partners that we have to consider okay in the uh, in the payment uh, for sanction party list and uh, embargo we can screen banks as well so vendor vendor master and customer customer master are very important uh, so when they are initially created and they are transferred to gts and for example you are procuring the third party uh, files i mean the files which you are procuring for spl you are getting it from third party data provider so that data provider provides you with the files and you upload it into the gts system so initial screening happens on the vendor master and customer master itself right so at the time of screening only if uh, these both guys are blocked then alternatively uh, once your purchase order and sales order and uh, any deliveries is created so they also grow go into the screening and whichever partner is part of the uh, transaction right uh, either it may be purchase order sales order if uh, that that person is in the block list then the relevant transactions are blocked either for embargo and spl for embargo we are not looking at customer and vendor we are only looking at the uh, destination location uh, okay uh, either it may be a departure country departure country is determined based on the uh, relevant settings that we do in gts but the destination location uh, or the ultimate consignee location is determined based on the vendor and customer country okay and then embargo is screened based on the country 
which uh, for which the vendor and customer has been created coming to the product classification we'll uh, see how we can classify hs codes uh, er eccn oga codes uh, we'll try to see if we can have that uh, uh, you know part of this hazardous is nothing but uh, when you have any hazardous goods or dangerous goods you have to seamlessly integrate ehs module which is our environment health and safety uh, which we will not be able to do it as of now commodity codes we can definitely have and all these are dependent based on the material master data which we will be receiving it from the s4 hana system <clears throat> so in the licensing part which is nothing but our legal control uh, we'll see how license determination happen we'll see how it can manage nested licenses and different uh, determinations at different levels uh, right and exemptions now exemptions is nothing but uh, as i said right uh, particular quantity and value based licenses which you can have only which you procure it from the government actually uh, so those exemptions are also taken into consideration unless and until those exemptions are met or your purchase order or sales order is according to the exemptions you are not allowed to clear the document uh, either it may be purchase order sales order or delivery right and then we have customs processing which will see integration with the aes so we can simulate the integration uh, definitely but we cannot connect uh, our system our training system to the uh, third party data provider or you know third party middleware actually and customs we cannot con uh, communicate it in the training system uh, but we can definitely simulate a transaction uh, whenever we are sending it to the customs how we will go going to get the response right so we can simulate it so it also includes several integration points with erp system 3pl broker d trade application software right these are all the integration uh, systems that we can integrate now 3pl is nothing but the system which is used for logistics right so broker we can also integrate it so there are, can be two types of integration which can happen one can be a broker integration and one can be uh, integration directly with the customs in gts so both can be possible right <clears throat> this is on a whole the solution summary so this is how it can be integrated uh, ECS, ecc is a different uh, box gts is a different block box and uh, we just are having a gts plugin in ecc where we can fetch all the data from gts on the runtime and we can see what are all the documents that are blocked we can see what are the uh, bombs that have been transferred if it has been exploded in the gts or not right so all those uh, relevant data which you want to see and which you want to have uh, seamlessly integrated with gts you can have it and also you can consolidate multiple shipments and send it at a send it as a single customs declaration in gts you can consolidate multiple outbound deliveries into one single invoice and that can be done through a standard plugin which is available at ecc system so that also is possible so all those different uh, you know features we will see when we uh, jump into the uh, uh, what do you say the integration part uh, between ecc and gts or s4 hana and gts and then we'll have a broad overview or broad picture of that <clears throat> so this is one of the capabilities uh, right from a sap export management point of view if you see there is one screenshot that i have attached right which is from a business partner screening in gts okay so in this screening uh, you can see what is the match percentage that have been happened for a particular entity or particular party and uh, against which uh, you know address it has been screened so all these audit trails and all this uh, data uh, if uh, your system is falsely blocking for example and you have a doubt that okay this partner i have been trading from so long why suddenly he got blocked in gts so all those data related to that uh, against which uh, entity he has been blocked and all you can see that in gts and what is the match percentage so this is very important in gts for spl screening and on a whole uh, this spl screening itself uh, classifying the match percentage and having the minimum percentage is very complex uh, subject in gts which sets up and which is very interesting as well on a parallel basis so yes screen business partners and documents at every step comprehensive audit trail as i said why the uh, what is the reason for the block 
right? Either it may be a business part or either it may be a document. An export control management automates the determination of export licenses and assignment of licenses to business transactions. So you can automate uh, the determination of export licenses. So what you do basically is when you try to have the legal control uh, automated, right? So basically you try to have the uh, <coughs> licenses created. Sorry, you, ha you have the licenses created. Every strategy is maintained. Every relevant uh, strategy for legal control is maintained in GTS. Uh, before uh, the document has been created in a document in the sense the sales order or purchase order, right? So all those documents when they are screened in GTS if specific license you are maintaining right? Uh, it can either be released. Okay, it can be either released or it will be blocked because the license does not meet the specific criteria What uh, is the data according to the sales order or purchase order? So it will check each and every minute detail in the documents and then only it will assign a specific license okay now here control class and classification of eccn codes eccn codes is nothing but export control classification numbers which is very important from a licensing point of view these are very important and these are tracked very closely and monitored very closely so then embargo check check potential embargo situations i mean if you want to have country to country situation then you can have that integrated Trade document service generation and distribution of export documents printing of different documents uh, from uh, GTS customs declaration right is also possible electronic communications with customs authorities. Yes, this is what is the main future and the highlighting future of GTS benefits avoid costly fines and penalties uh, when you try to deal with certain parties who are uh, not compliant uh, then you make sure that you block them. So that is the main reason why GTS has in place in every every other uh, organization that you see, right? Every other organization is leveraging GTS, and the main reason is compliance. Shorter delivery times uh, through automated rate compliance processes. Yes, uh, when you uh, send the declaration data to uh, customs authorities way before uh, you know your uh, shipment has uh, depart departed, right, from the port of that departure or uh, from the office of exit uh, right so it makes sure that you have all the details with the customs authorities and if you are missing with any information a gts even uh, won't even allow you to send the data to the customs so that is one validation that you have in gts okay improve work work up work productivity by moving the management by expectations right? secure a corporate brand uh, which is uh, very important when you uh, when you're a big uh, corporate brand uh, who has a huge brand and a, and is a famous brand so you won't want you don't want to harm those or you, won't, you don't want to you know uh, harm the brand or have any negative impact on the brand so that is very important uh, just because you are dealing with a entity who whom you are unknown to and um, who you are not closely monitoring right or he may be in the list of the denied parties so what happens in to that you may end up paying huge fines hefty fines and your corporate brand is uh, you know diluted be prepared for legal audits for each and every uh, company or organization will have their uh, internal audits right uh, where they will try to see if uh, whatever data uh, is being uh, you know whatever transactions has been happening in the past uh, uh, so audits usually happen in quarter basis half yearly basis right or annual basis right so whatever data you require from one quarter for a, for an half yearly or from a year perspective you can have all those data uh, uh, documented or you can have all those uh, data available in the database and uh, for example if you want to see what are the different types of different uh, uh, IVL licenses that have been used IVL is nothing but quantity or value depreciation based licenses how many licenses have been transacted in the past three months so that audits you can have in gts right from us to russia how many transactions have been happening in the past uh, few months or the last month right because the sanctions have been lifted so heavily that you want to monitor each and every detail uh, very closely so in that case you want to make sure that you are not missing out any uh, error okay <clears throat> so that you can be automatic um, automatically integrated so now in this picture if you see right this is a sales order basically so this sales order as i was speaking 
uh, when you have any uh, block, uh, when your master data is blocked, either it may be customer or vendor, uh, when you're trying to save the order right at the time of saving itself, you will find a uh, pop up you know, similar to this screenshot that it is blocked block for uh, embargo SPL license or restitution or it may be LOC as well, uh, which is letter of credit. So all these details you will be able to uh, see it in the ACC system itself at the time of save because uh, the RFC is so uh, you know quick enough and so efficient that it makes a call directly in the background and so quickly it fetches the information from GTS. So that is one uh, automation or one important factor uh, that you can see in the uh, ECC system or the S4HANA system at the time of save. So before moving to compliance management, any doubts in this uh, <clears throat> overview? Uh, I'm fine, thanks. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. So from a process walkthrough perspective, we'll now go and see uh, what is compliance management all about. So the first uh, so sub module in compliance. Many, yeah. Sorry. How many more slides you have? to cover today so i think we'll cover embargo and i had a spl also in scope but i don't i don't think it will be possible in 14 minutes but embargo will be possible okay. actually i have uh, 75 slides but <laughs> i planned it for the next nine days yeah that's fine i mean i'm yeah time wise i'm okay, okay. so just to let you know sure sure I mean, we'll, we'll be able to cover embargo in just 13 minutes. So, yeah. No. Okay. So, yeah. Nothing much. Uh, nothing much. No, I haven't planned anything for today, so I'm totally available. <laughs> okay. Okay. Nice. So, embargo, I mean, uh, as the name itself suggests and as the picture <laughs> itself you see, right, there are different uh, countries who, which are in red, right, uh, and different countries which are uh, in white. So, these uh, these suggest that uh, which are the countries that you don't want to deal with. This is just an example. Don't take it too seriously because we have India in here. So <laughs> I don't want you to take it very seriously. So destination restrictions such as embargoes and sanctions refer to the restrictions on trade with certain countries ranging from a comprehensive embargo to a targeted financial sanction, right? <clears throat> so government agencies administer and enforce uh, you know, comprehensive uh, embargoes and sanctions such as the UN uh, Security Council. So uh, these regulations against the certain countries. So because they are, you know, imposed to uh, address uh, to address a specific political situation or a, a foreign policy objective, each embargo or sanction program can vary extensively and depending on country. If any country wants to accept it, if any one country wants to, uh, you know, not accept it, for example, um recently right um us us uh, asked or european union as well for that matter asked india not to support russia because uh, of the sanctions that they have uh, on the uh, you know uh, russian russian uh, country so but india did not support it right because india uh, was on the neutral as a neutral uh, they were on the neutral side they were not either on the us side they were not either on the russian side because they they have very good relations with Russia, so they did not want to uh, part ways with US and uh, you know Russia. So that's the reason they took a neutral standpoint. And uh, as our external foreign minister also said, right, he that <clears throat> that even uh, European Union buys so much of oil reserves and gas and energy from Russia, then why are they doing uh, sanctions so many so why are they having so much sanctions on them, right? So that is uh, related to each and every country decision and uh, they can take the decision in independently but the impact of that is right what it can how it can be impacted is whenever india is any difficult whenever india is facing any difficulty or anything right so uh, the uh, the other countries such as us or eu european union will not come for support so that is the only challenge or only you know important uh, thing that india needs to consider but Obviously, they have their own. Uh, we have their. Uh, we have our own independent choices to make. That which side we need to be on, right? 
सो दैट इज जस्ट एन एग्जाम्पल सो एम्बार्गो सिचुएशन प्रोग्राम्स में कवर इम्पोर्ट एक्सपोर्ट एंड फाइनेंशियल ट्रांजेक्शन राइट एज आई सेट इम्पोर्ट ऑब्वियसली परचेज ऑर्डर विल बी स्क्रीन एंड इन बॉन्ड डिलीवरीज एज वेल एक्सपोर्ट परस्पेक्टिव सेल्स ऑर्डर्स आउट बॉन्ड डिलीवरीज एंड यू नो योर पेमेंट ट्रांजेक्शन ऑल्सो विल बी स्क्रीन आउट गोइंग पेमेंट और इनकमिंग पेमेंट्स ओके सो दे मे ब्लॉक एसेट्स टू और टारगेट स्पेसिफिक इंडिविजुअल एंटिटीज और कॉमोडिटीज दे मे अप्लाई टू फॉरिन कंट्रीज एज वेल एज नेशनल एंड लीगल एंटिटीज फ्रॉम दोज कंट्रीज एज वेल एंड मे एक्सटेंड टू इम्पोर्ट्स और एक्सपोर्ट्स ऑफ सर्विसेज सो ऑल्सो दे मे प्रोहिबिट और रिस्ट्रिक्ट एक्सपोर्ट एंड री एक्सपोर्ट फाइनेंशियल ट्रांजेक्शन एंड ट्रेवल टू सर्टन कंट्रीज एज वेल राइट सो द टर्म्स एम्बार्गो एंड सैंक्शन टेक्निकली हैव डिफरेंट मीनिंग्स बट दे आर ऑफन यूज यू नो इंटरचेंजेबली Uh, to refer controls prohibiting trade and transactions with certain countries so a uh, comprehensive uh, embargo prohibits uh, the export of all goods and services to certain countries with a few limited uh, expectations or exceptions uh, and such as trade is trade in certain eligible medical or agricultural goods to a certain end users is prohibited okay a certain uh, a sanction is narrower in scope that an embargo you know a partial embargo also can be imposed and restricts the sale of specific materials and services to a particular countries or parties within a country so even you can have that as well so going further how do you handle handle embargo in gts so embargo uh, is a spanish term is defined as a partial or, or a complete prohibition of commerce and trade with a particular country in order to isolate it okay it is defined as a country level legal regulation and country level so we have two ways how we can define it okay so you the so we have basically three types of embargoes the one is uh, complete embargo okay the other is partial embargo and we have the third one called as weapons or arms embargo so uh, to coming to the complete embargo now let's consider an example that uh, you know syria okay Syria is a country who has a negative uh, brand or image. Okay, uh, so in that case, what you do uh, when you export uh, any goods from US to Syria? So your your uh, company knows that you know it's not uh, very good uh, to export it and have business with Syria or Syrian customers. So what what do you do? You have a embargo in place for Syria. So uh, not only your company. Uh, so in your organization right when you have placed the embargo on syria uh, no, so not only your company from us can trade uh, uh, with uh, syria but also your company from uh, um, uh, india also cannot trade suppose you have two different entities one based out india and one based out us so if you have a complete embargo on syria right neither us entity nor indian entity can trade with syria okay that's a complete embargo definition so it is a global embargo basically and this decision is taken by the un uh, security council the united nations basically okay so if the countries want to adhere to that rules and regulations they can adhere to if they don't want then it's up to them right similar uh, case how what we saw for russia they were requesting uh, all the other countries or the all the neighboring countries uh, to uh, uh, uplift the or lift the uh, basically put the sanctions on russia but india or any other country did not respond to but the european union and us still have the sanctions going on now also they have there has been lot of updates in the sanctions as well which has impacted lots and lots of organizations because they are because what happens right when you are shipping any particular product to uh, russia for example right you as an exporting country you need to make sure that you are fulfilling all the licensing requirements as well okay so for example yesterday uh, uh, before before the laws got implemented yesterday uh, my product which i was shipping was classified with a specific accn number which did not require license but as of today since the rules have been updated the my product may require my uh, may require some licensing uh, data as well to be incorporated so that can be a change as well so yes uh, coming back to the embargoes uh, that is a complete embargo definition now coming to the partial embargo situation right so partial embargo situation is very simple uh, it is uh, from country to country okay it's not on a global basis so for example india doesn't want to have a trade with pakistan 
so what they do they have a uh, partial embargo on pakistan where you know india cannot purchase or sell anything to pakistan okay so that is a partial embargo now why because it's a partial embargo because your indian entity is not relying to deal with pakistan but your us entity can do trade with pakistan right so that is a partial embargo definition only if you want uh, country to country restrictions right then you can have a partial embargo implemented but uh, your other countries if where your other uh, where your organization is based out of other countries can reliably have the trade with that country there is no harm in that so that is a pair pair of uh, block that we have in gts okay it's on country to country restrictions <clears throat> then uh, we have weapons or arms embargo so now how this weapons are or arms embargo are incorporated is these weapons embargo uh, right when we try to uh, incorporate this these are basically at the product level and these are basically to uh, to restrict the military activities or military assistance to any other country okay now for example in syria you know right i mean how people are basically <laughs> i don't want to say it uh, loudly because uh, but but it's still you uh, you still see the missiles all flying over right you cannot trust anyone when a missile can come into your uh, neighbor and then fall off so so that's the situation in syria so in that situation when the country is so uh, so much involved in terrorism right so you as a exporting country you need to make sure that you are not supporting or giving any military assistance to syria okay so because uh, anyways they will use it for a uh, not for a good use because they will not save, use it for safeguarding their country they will basically use it for a wrong purpose they will have a wrong purpose in behind that right so that should be avoided and for to avoid that you have weapons and arms embargo in uh, place so basically we have this uh, inter, uh, itar uh, which is nothing but international tariff an application for uh, the legal regulations so uh, you know where you focus on arms okay you focus on arms embargoes and weapon weaponries so you uh, you do not support if you, if in case you want to export any arms or weapons to any country called as syria then you make sure that you have the proper itar license for that okay so that is the on a whole uh, the embargo uh, definition for example if you see here right syria and imports these are some of the examples of partial embargoes syria and imports of uh, oil uh, syria imports oil uh, then embargoed by uh, eu and us for arms so this is one of the partial georgia import embargoed by russia for agricultural products wine mineral water then you have eu and us has enacted arms embargo on china cuba uh, you know embargoed by us for arms consumer goods between us and cuba we always have some embargoes in place un usa and uh, eu has embargoed north korea for luxury goods nobody uh, deals with north korea right you know you might always know that exports uh, because nobody is allowed in north korea or nobody allowed to exit north korea as well so exports of animal shipments from mexico has been blocked due to radiation after the 2011 uh earthquake uh, after math so this is one this is these are all the certain embargoes that have been uh, in place in currently currently which are in place right <clears throat> so we have some master data related to embargo in gts where uh which checks it has been blocked or not okay we'll see the process how it works this is again the same example that we saw in the previous slide so as a gts uh you see the entire process is dependent on create and change document in ecc whenever you create uh, any sales order or purchase order in ecc right it is uh, performing an embargo check on the sales document and business partners based on the legal regulations and country of departure okay now your country of departure is the base of uh, your check because uh, your since uh, it's a sales document right you as an exporter is not in risk but when there is a country uh, where your business partner is based out of so that country is basically important for the embargo check okay and uh, if the check is successful and if the country is present in the uh, you know 
embargo list then uh, release then you can either uh, release the document manually after processing the documents and monitor and then only you will be continuing the process in ECC if you don't release the document you cannot continue the process in ECC right it's as simple as that so releasing the documents manually also requires specific license and special approval from your higher authorities because unless and until you have a approval if you release it you are violating the compliance and you may be uh, eligible to pay FT fines and you will be scrutinized very closely okay so that is that is the main reason why see you can always release your embargo document uh, i mean embargo block uh, manually in gts but what is the impact of releasing it you have to identify the impact first and then you have to release it so that is all about the embargo i think we are on time so so this will only check at the country of the departure or also the uh, country who is uh, accepting these goods also that that yeah, so, also yeah as i told right there are two situations so either you place a complete complete embargo or you place a partial embargo so in the partial embargo scenario your departure and destination country both will be checked but in case of your complete embargo which is your global embargo only your country of destination will be checked okay so uh, here it was written no like that's why i asked like embargo performed oh. on a sales document business partner based on the legal regulations and country of departure so as Correct. well as the destination also or it is only departure no so business partners is representing your destination country correct and legal okay. legal regulation and country yeah, of departure is your destination business partner who is ship to party in this case okay ship to party or sold to party yes correct mm -hmm. so your business partner your destination country will be picked from your business partner data and your uh, departure country will be picked from your legal regulation and compared against the uh, fto so fto uh, i mean to say the company code or the plant where you are shipping the product from uh, could you explain the last sentence again please release document manually no, no, no. After uh, the embargo check performed on you said uh, yeah okay. okay so uh, see basically embargo check right is performed based on the two factors uh, two one factor to consider here is the business partner so why we are considering the business partner is the end consumer okay the end consumer of the product is the business partner for example the ship to party the ship to party country is india okay now mm -hmm. from us to india there's a transaction us is the departure country departure country is picked from the plant or the company code correct mm -hmm. the company code uh, if it is present in us is a exporting entity and this is the departure country but your destination country is picked from the data of the business partner because he is located in a foreign country and then that's how you are making it relevant for check so if there is a block between this pair uh, from US to India, for example, then it will block your document and it will not allow you to process. Once uh, once you have the document released, then only you will be able to process. So this is a master data that we need to set up in GTA system. That is part of uh, the activity. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, any other doubts? nothing as of now okay so Sorry. if you don't have any doubts then uh, yeah i mean you can continue if you want or uh, if someone i mean anything is fine with me at this point uh i think we already have covered two hours so yeah i think it would be better we cover okay yeah okay so uh, when are we planning to connect next is this going to be a weekend uh, two hour per day class i mean saturday sunday how are you all planning yeah that's what i have heard from navin uh, yeah, saturday sunday saturday sunday uh, these timings are perfect for me so you know okay uh, so if you're planning to start 10 would be your 7:30 in the evening correct 
So basically, uh, we uh, we had planned it from six uh, thirty Indian Standard Time to eight uh, thirty PM. Okay. So, so if so, you so Chin, is it possible for you to put it between Friday and Saturday any chance, like instead of Saturday Sunday? Friday and Saturday. Uh, uh, Friday morning. Same timings. Friday, I'll be at work in the morning. If you do Friday evening, mm -hmm. uh, it'll be Friday uh, morning for me, which means I definitely can't attend. Uh, Saturday, okay. Sunday is fine. Uh, I mean, if you go at you know uh, six thirty or seven thirty, both are fine for me. For me, Saturday, Sunday, uh, Friday, anything is fine between this. But you guys, I mean, decide and confirm. That's for me, Sunday is a working day. Here, yeah. so, so that's why so I was Satish, asking. like like Satish, like we did today, is it possible for you on Sunday? I know it's a working day. Uh, sun, Sunday is a working day, but only thing is like uh, today I couldn't come on time from office. So no, we can. We did, I mean, the same time, Sachin, what we did today, uh, is it fine for everyone? Yeah, ten to Sunday. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that was fine for me. Same time what we did Saturday, Sunday, two hours each works for me. Even if you so extend, it's fine for you as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'll I'll have to extend it up to nine thirty p.m., which is fine. But uh, at uh, Saturday, uh, Satish, if we can have it from six, uh, I mean one hour before, Saturday, right? Saturday yeah, 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 should be okay. Saturday is not an okay. issue. Okay, uh, works for me also. Saturday yeah, okay. one hour yeah. early. Uh, yeah, basically Saturday six thirty for you, and Sunday seven thirty for you works for me. Perfect. Correct. Yeah. Yes. But uh, you so will have two hours hour. each day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, two hours each day. Two hours each day. Yeah. And Sachin, did you get the status of the system? Yeah. So we, I have uh, worked on the system. It's uh, con connected. S four and GTS is connected. So we can start with the. Once we complete the overview sessions, right? So we will uh, switch to the uh, relevant settings. Okay. Did you check the S4 system? There are plans. I'm not sure which system did you receive. No, I I will get in touch uh, with you. I mean, when we start with the practical, uh, you know, configuration and relevant things, right? So I would need your help to identify the relevant master data and transactions. Correct. So yeah, would, yeah, 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 yeah. Before the yeah before the session in, in even in the weekdays. You can mm. contact me and we can sit together and close this topic. If something needs sure. to be done, we will get the system ready. Sure. Or else uh, we can do one thing. I mean, you can keep the data ready uh, before the session when we have uh, to, uh, you know, uh, check the transactions, then we can have it ready, right? So I can just go in the system and then I'll uh, just check it. No issue. Well, I don't know which S4 system is there. <laughs> so it's it the S4 same system on which we did. Sorry? S4 HANA client 300. 300. Yeah, I think we also did that the 300. We also did the training okay. of PM and 300. Okay, then I think it's perfect, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, let me check okay. with Naveen which system is really connected. Sure, sure. Yeah, okay. Okay, sir. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, okay. thank you. Thanks, Sachin. Thank it you, was everyone. a good. Uh, Good demo. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for your feedback. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.